Okay, so welcome to part two of Learning Target 5, where we're going to put into practice how to find the enthalpy of formation and decide whether or not these are endothermic or exothermic processes using some literature values. So here's an example question. Determine the enthalpy change for the fluorination of methane to form fluoromethane and hydrogen fluoride gas. So remember how I've said many, many, many times that chemistry just keeps on tying back onto each itself. You're gonna have to remember some Lewis structures here. So I'm gonna go through how to do the simple Lewis structure for methane. So I've got one carbon with four valence electrons. I got that from my periodic table. I got four hydrogens with one valence electron, and that gives me a total of eight valence electrons in the structure. Carbon is always going to go in the center. I'm thinking about honk, one, two, three, four. Carbon always has four bonds. So the only possible structure for methane is going to look like this. So there's my methane. Plus, and then I got fluorine here. And fluorine is going to have a total of 14 electrons. Uh, and I'll back up and say that's two fluorines times seven valence electrons a piece. So I'm going to have fluorine single bonded to fluorine. Two, remember, single bond is two electrons. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I don't have to put those valence electrons, but I'm just doing it to remind you how to do Lewis structures. Pretend I'm counting my valence electrons here. So I've got CH3F. And just as a reminder of a Lewis structure, I'm putting valence electrons there. And I've got HF here like that. And that's two. OK. So there's step one. I've got my Lewis structures. And now I'm going to. Remember that my enthalpy of formation is going to equal the sum of the bonds broken. I'm just going to say broke minus the sum of formed. So I'm going to now use my data table. I've got one, two, three, four CH bonds. I go to my table and say CH is 414, 414. So I've got four times of 414. Plus, I've got one F double, single bond. So an FF single bond is 159. And these are all on the reactant side, minus, and I formed one, two, three CH3 bonds. And that's gonna be the 414 again, plus one CF bond. And CF is gonna be 492 plus, and then I've got one HF bond and HF is gonna be 567. So I am now ready to grab my calculator and double check me as I go. I'm gonna have four times 414 plus an additional 159. I'm gonna get that value. I'm gonna subtract from that three times 414 plus 492 plus a 567. And I am going to get the heat of formation here to be negative 486. And my units here are going to be kilojoules per mole. So it's going to release negative 486 kilojoules per mole of the CH3F and HF that are formed. And so that is my first example. 
One of the questions that will be asked, however, is going to be um, how certain are you about this answer? And you will always say, if it's an IB question, I am uncertain because literature values tend to differ based upon the resource at which I'm getting my table. So you might find another source that will get you negative 485, and that all depends on what resource you are looking at. Let's look at our next, next example. So same type of thing going on here. These are just going to be more complex Lewis structures. And it says determine the enthalpy change for the hydrogenation of one, but1ene. I'm going to tell you how to get these names later on. So I'm going to use the honk1234 rule here. And I'm going to start with four carbons. And I know all my carbons want four bonds. So I'm going to do that. And I need eight hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So got a little bit of an issue here. And the issue is going to be that I got two bonds left over. And so I know then I'm gonna have to do some double bonding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm going to erase one hydrogen from here and I'm going to double bond it to the carbon here and I'm going to erase this double bond and now I've got one two three four five six seven and then all I have to do is put that one more H on the end. Now I could have done this with any of the carbons on here and it would have been a different isomer, but that really doesn't matter for this problem. Plus H2 and that's what that molecule is going to look like. And hydrogenation just means I add a whole bunch of hydrogens to it, two more per molecule. So instead of having some double bonds, I'm going to have some single bonds. Boom, boom. So I'm taking butene and making butane. And there we go. And now we're ready to do that exact same process with the formed minus the broken, or the broken minus the form, sorry. So I'm going to have some of the broke minus the sum of the forms. It's gonna give me my enthalpy of formation. So I broke one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight CH bonds. And if I go back a slide, CH was 414. And again, remember those are all coming off of that table that you have gotten off of your nuts and bolts folder. I've got one, two, one, two carbon carbon bonds. Two carbon carbon bonds. It's gonna give me 346. Double check that. Yep, 346. And then I've got one carbon-carbon double bond. And I'm going to cheat and go back and look at my other screen and discover that my carbon-carbon double bond is 614. You'll see that on the bottom of your multiplication table looking thing on your enthalpies. So 614 is my carbon-carbon bond here. Minus, and then this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon hydrogen bonds. So ten times four fourteen plus one, two, three carbon carbon bonds. 
and carbon carbon was 346. One, two, three of them. Three at 346. All right. So broke minus formed. Doing my math. I got eight times 414 plus two times 346. It's doing all of that jewel accounting there. Plus 614. Get that answer. Subtracted from uh, 10 times 414 plus three times 346. And another exothermic process has happened. And oh, by the way, most of these are gonna be exothermic. Negative 560 kilojoules per every mole of butane formed. Any assumptions that you might have? Once again, it all depends on what table you're using to get those enthalpy values. You can't be 100% sure on any of them because all enthalpy tables are based upon a limited amount of data. So hopefully the problems are just as simple as that. I put another one out there that I'm gonna call level two, where maybe you are going to be asked to solve backwards and find an enthalpy value if you know a heat of formation. Hopefully this helps and we'll talk to you soon.